Okay, so French immersion. So here at Riverside, we're just gonna give you a, an overview about what the program will entail here at Riverside, um, what you can expect in terms of courses, a lot of the nuts and bolts about going into grade nine that might be new, especially we do have a lot of parents here who are sending their first child to Riverside. So things might be a bit daunting seemingly coming from middle school, but hopefully we'll clear up some of those questions for you. Uh, over the course of the next 30 minutes. As I mentioned, we're on a bit of a tight timeline because our school licensing only allows for 40 minute meetings. So uh, we might not get a chance to field your questions live, but we'll make sure that our emails are available to you. So I just wanna give you a bit of information about uh, the program as a whole. So here at Riverside and in general in French immersion, our goal is that at the end of grade 12, students are bilingual or multilingual, depending on how many languages you speak at home. And with the idea that they'll be adequately equipped to work or live in a French environment. So um, we'll talk a bit about what that might look like in the future. But for us personally at Riverside, uh, we have a great team who's very cohesive. We all have the same philosophy. Kind of broke it down into about five goals that are quite important for us. So first of all, obviously, if we want them to be bilingual, they need to be fluent in their written and oral capacities. So learning how to read, write, listen, and speak. Um, those are all important skills to develop over the course of the next four years, along with the time that they've done immersion in the past. Confidence is super important as well. So no doubt at some point you've had you know, a guest who speaks French or a family member, and then you encourage your child, hey, why don't you say something in French? And they typically tend to shy away. That's totally normal, but we want to build that confidence so that when those opportunities arise, they're able to engage willingly um, and be eager to share what they've learned. Cultural awareness. So for a lot of us, when we think about French, we think about Quebec and France. So we have a very uh, limited scope of what the Francophone world is. And we're gonna try to share that with the students that, to know that there's a lot more in terms of art, language, media, culture, than just those two places. Uh, it, it is important for us to help develop some sort of passion though for the language and for the culture. Uh, it definitely makes learning easier when kids start to buy in on their own. Uh, you know, one of the ways that we try to get kids hooked is to show them music. So you might have heard certain songs at home uh, or when they you pick them up, they heard it at school and they wanna put that on their Spotify. We wanna get them to do that on their own um, because naturally they'll seek out more French media. They'll see that all the time that they spent learning a language has become, you know, become something that they can use in a day to day. And naturally, if they enjoy it, it might make them a bit more inclined to work harder or more curious about the language. Uh, and they'll be able to share that with others. So as with anything, learning something that we like is a lot easier than learning something that we, we really don't enjoy. Finally, a really important piece is identity as a French language learner. So our schooling has a huge impact on who we become, regardless of whether we're in French immersion or not. Uh, and we want students to be able to look back at the role French immersion played in their lives and know that it may have had greater effects than they would have realized at the time. So it's not just about speaking French. There's a whole lot more that comes along with it, which I'll mention in a little bit here. But we certainly want students to take pride in saying that they're in French immersion from Riverside. Uh, and that starts with developing a better sense of identity. So I'm gonna sell the program a little bit here because there might be some parents who are debating between do we go to Riverside and continue French immersion? There's an IB program at Port Moody. There's a Talons program at Glen Eagle. Well, I'm gonna try to sell you on it. Um, hopefully you're already in and your child is already really keen on coming in. But when we talk about the benefits of French immersion, we, you know, whether speaking with parents or with students, we say, hey, why are you in French immersion? Or why do your parents put you in French immersion? We always get the same sorts of answers. So. Uh, it's easier to get a job. I'm going to work for the government one day. I don't know why everyone's so keen on working for the government because I'm not sure that 13, 14 year olds are very uh, aware of their pension in the future. They talk about higher salary. One day I'm going to travel to France and I want to be able to speak the language. Those things are great. And, you know, those are obviously appealing um, to students and parents alike. But there's also a bit where we don't really you know, we don't sell this part as much. And I wish we did sort of as a collective program because I think these things are a bit more important. 
First of all, cultural tolerance. Naturally, when we're learning a language or culture, we develop a sort of appreciation for different languages and cultures, traditions, lifestyles all around the world. So we consequently become more accepting of others. And I think, you know, whether the content is, you know, kept in mind 10 years down the road, I think if they develop this ability to be a bit more open and a bit more accommodating of others, then that's more than we could hope for. Uh, learning a second language forces us to think in different ways. So literally, we know that there are cognitive changes that occur in learning when learning a second or third or fourth language. Um, and with the experience that we would have earned over the time we spent in French immersion, we'll start to look at the world in sort of a different lens. So someone as a bilingual, maybe start to see words in a different way, sort of see the differences between cultures a bit, a bit differently. Resilience. So whether it was you, the parent, or the child who decided to enroll in French immersion, um, it was clear from the get-go that there would be an added challenge. School is already hard, especially high school when we're going through a lot in our lives. Uh, but having an extra language is, you know, just that added extra challenge of having to learn the content, which is already complex in itself. And then we're adding in a language where sometimes it doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, it's all a bit, you know, regardless of what language it is, it's all a bit arbitrary. Um, and there will be moments where students don't know how to express themselves because they don't have the vocabulary yet. There will be obstacles and difficulties along the way. So we're going to push the students to push themselves and encourage them to work hard and remain committed to their goal. And we know that they'll succeed. And in doing so, they'll develop a bit more resilience as they go down the road. And finally, community. Now, this comes a bit back to the identity bit that I was talking about in our last session or in our last slide. But when we talk to our grade 12s at the end of June, they're ready to graduate, they're going on to big things. We asked them, what was the most important thing that French immersion represented for you? And I would say nine times out of 10, they say community. The words family come up a lot, um, comfort, acceptance. As most of your kids are probably going through now, the students spend a lot of their time together. So they might have been together since kindergarten, every year with the same peers. Sometimes that's not always productive, but when you get to high school, you start to mix with other schools as well. And you find a nice, comfortable group. And the students always feel like they can come into our classroom. It's a safe space. They feel very at ease knowing that they can share a bit more, that they can dig a bit deeper when um, doing activities and working together. And it just creates a really positive environment. And when we ask kids, you know, what it is exactly that's so important they just they felt like home that's usually a word that comes up it feels like home where sometimes when they're in a class mixed in with students in the english program they might not feel that same sort of connection and we have the advantage as teachers because we see students in grades 9 10 11 12 so uh, helene for example teaches uh i think grades 9 to 12 this year all four grades uh, i have 9 to 12 as well so we get to see the growth over a few years and kind of develop relationships where every year they come back and then we're able to follow up and kind of uh, build further on what we've already developed in the past. So those bits there, I hope that if you are on the fence, those are things that can sell you a bit more on the program, because like I said, we, we think about the tangible things, um, but we don't really think about how that's affecting us maybe on a different level. Now, to get to the nitty gritty of it, so I'll go over a bit about what French immersion classes are going to be required um, over the course of the four years, what types of courses will be available, and what the schedule will look like for your children. So in order to obtain a bilingual diploma, so the double dogwood, the students will need to complete at a minimum French 10, so Francais 10, French 11, French 12, plus a few extra electives to give certain credits. So if you look on the right side of the screen, you'll see that uh, in grades nine and 10, they're expected to take a minimum of four French classes. And then grades 11 and 12, just two of their courses will be in French at a minimum. Obviously we encourage students to take more classes so that they can get a full French immersion experience. Uh, added exposure is always an important element of learning a language, but uh, that's the bare minimum there. As well, there will be four provincial numeracy literacy assessments. So they do numeracy and literacy assessments in grades 10 and 12. This year, for example, is the first year that there's a French immersion 
literacy assessment. It got pushed back because of COVID the last couple of years, but uh, it tests, again, those main four components, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So when we do the English assessments, we're not typically asked to produce orally or do listening activities because we assume that everyone uh, is pretty much there already. But in French, that is a big learning goal for us and uh, it varies a lot from person to person. So one of the questions that we had in the Microsoft forum was, is it possible for my child to do French immersion and still do honors or science co-op? Absolutely. So students in French immersion still have access to all these other programs. Every year we have, you know, honors classes or at least 50% French immersion students. Same thing with science co-op, outdoor ed's a new program that's been offered in the last few years. That's got a, a pretty good following as well. There's really no restriction in terms of scheduling uh, when it comes to French immersion. Obviously, there are certain courses that won't happen in English. So for example, in grade nine, they do PE in French. They won't have the option of choosing PE in English. But generally speaking, if they want to do an enrichment program, they have access to that. Just to touch on one question that we did have about the EPIC program. Uh, the EPIC program is a program for high performance athletes. Uh, and that's organized through the school district for students who might need to be away. So we have a lot of high level dancers, um, we have a, a super elite volleyball player this year who might need to be away from school to do training and that sort of thing. And uh, there's sy systems put in place to support those students and make sure that they're getting everything that they need. Uh, that application can be done online. And I think uh, Helene's going to add the link for you a bit later if that's something that interests you. Now, in terms of courses, so this is how it looks uh, from year to year. So as I was saying, grade nine, they have four classes that they need to take. So we're in this column here. That's 50% of their schedule. So at a minimum, students are required to take eight blocks in a year. Sometimes, depending on some courses that run outside of timetable, they might be able to take more. And I'll show you that in a second. But in grade nine, they'll take French, social studies, PE, and a class that's called Conversation 10. Uh, in French. So those four courses are mandatory. There's not a lot of option in grade nine in terms of their French immersion bit, unless they were choosing to take a French immersion elective as their fifth, as a fifth course. Uh, just to give you an idea of what this Conversation 10 class is, because it's a bit different, uh, this is a locally developed course that's been running at Riverside since probably 12, two, about 2010, so for the last 10, 12 years. And the idea of Conversation 10 is that it's set up as a transition course for the incoming grade nines. Uh, we recognize that incoming grade nines, there's a lot to consider. Just talking to the grade nines today when we we're doing one-on-ones, they're saying, I couldn't find my locker. I didn't know what classes to go to. So there's a lot uh, of challenges that come in with grade nine. And we wanted it to be a tiny bit easier for them in terms of their courses. So in first semester, all the grade nine students will be taking Conversation 10. This is a course that um, is a lot lighter academically. So we don't have quizzes, we don't have tests, there's no novel studies, we don't do grammar. And a lot of what we do is just engaging with the students in discussions, activities, we do improvisation. And we're trying to do a few things. We want students to be able to meet their new peers. We'll have students coming from uh, Maple Creek, from Pitt River, Citadel, Quay, some kids from the CS at the Francophone School, some students who are moving here from other districts. We want to give them an opportunity to get a chance to know each other in a bit of a lower pressure situation. And, you know, that comes back to that same idea of building that sense of community. So we want to get that, do that from the get go. As I was mentioning, it's a lot less academically heavy. So they don't really typically have a lot of homework from day to day. But it's also to give them an idea of the expectations uh, of high school in general, but also within our French immersion department. So we're very strict about speaking in French in class. A lot of our teachers in our department are ex, including myself and Helene, are ex French immersion students who went to Kilmer, who went to Pitt, who went to Riverside. So we've been in literally those same seats and we know the importance of practicing our French regularly. And that is something that we've struggled a lot with with incoming students because sometimes the expectation is not there or sometimes, especially with COVID, we're working at home and online so we don't have that habit of doing so. So we wanna get kids in that habit early on so that in second semester, we can move on to the French nine class. And there we're gonna be a bit more demanding in terms of work. So that's when we have those 
quizzes and exams and we have uh, rights to do and, and essays. So uh, this is in semester one to get them ready and to get them a bit acclimatized with everybody in the class and, all, and ourselves as teachers. And then this will come in semester two once they're used to the habits and then moving forward. Grade 10, they also have four classes. So again, 50%. You'll notice that the first three classes are mandatory. So French 10, Social's 10. This is a planning course. We'll learn about budgeting, uh, career possibilities, um, all types of things. And then there's a French elective. So here they'll be required to choose a course in French. And we have a few options that we'll show you in just a second here. Grade 11 and 12, so now it's only a quarter of their course load that's going to be required to be in French. Again, we encourage more, but we know that students, have, you know, might be really keen on exploring science and technology as they prepare themselves for university. So typically we have fewer students in French electives in grade 11 and 12, uh, but those opportunities are there for them. As we, I was just mentioning, we do have some elective choices. We're starting to diversify a little bit in the types of subject areas that we're exploring. So we do have home, ec uh, home economics, so Etude des Aliments. This is a food and nutrition class. So if you want to encourage your child to learn how to cook uh, a bit more or be a bit more self-sufficient in terms of food, this is a great opportunity for them. And you'll notice that Etude des Aliments 10, so even though that says grade 10 there, it's a grade 10 credit, but it's available to grade nine students if they choose to do so. Um, social studies. So these will come a bit later in grade 11, grade 12. But we have history 12 and comparative civ with our guru. We have Dr. Ursu, who is a genius and all the kids love him. Um, he has an insane amount of knowledge and he spends his summer, you know, while we spend our summer sleeping and going to the beach, he spends his summer rewriting new textbooks for his own classes. So he's definitely um, an experience for a lot of students and they, they just rave about his classes. Uh, in French, we do some oral French work in grade 11 and 12, that's open to students as well. This is gonna be a new course. Uh, this is Media Arts 10. And we this is the first time we've branched out into the art department, but it's a new course being offered this year. And this will allow students to explore their interests without being academically heavy. So history, obviously, it's probably going to be a bit more reading. There's going to be some exams, some big projects. Media arts is going to be like your typical art uh, elective. And this course specifically will focus on work with photo and video, understand basics of composition and editing, uh, exploring new creative concepts. And we do, since we're a tech school, do a lot of projects that require some technology. So they can definitely apply that to different parts or different courses. We also have uh, peer tutoring opportunity for older students if they feel comfortable working with younger peers in French as well. Course selections. So in a couple of weeks, maybe in a week, uh, your child should receive a form that looks like this. Sorry, I know it's really small, um, but you'll get a bigger piece of paper in a few weeks. On it, this is how the students are going to choose their courses for grade nine. So they will be required to choose one course from each subject area. So if you look here, we have English 9 and English 9 honors. So they only choose one of the two. Same thing with math. There's multiple options here. PE in French, that's their only option. Science and science honors, they have a choice. But socials, French, conversation, they don't have a choice. Those are mandatory. So if we count through it, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven courses. That means they get one elective choice that they get to choose. Um, and we have a whole bevy of options available for you depending on your child's interests. So um, the, all those elective areas will be brought to your, student, uh, your children at middle school. We'll have some videos presented to them. Our counseling team will go meet with them virtually. Um, you can access the school website. There's an area that says course information that will give you quite a bit of info about the courses as well. The one elective course does not have to be in French immersion. So that's their option. They can decide to do, um, you know, an intro to economics if they want to do. They can do uh, bike repair, whatever it may be. That can be in English. But just know that the first choice is not always guaranteed. So that's why we have a few alternate electives here. Uh, just because sometimes, depending on the program, especially with French immersion, uh, our schedules are a bit more locked in place and it might not if we're running only one for example one bike repair class that's running in the last block of the day 
and your child is doing epic program and they have to leave early, obviously that won't work for the schedule. So we do ask that you put some alternate electives there uh, so that at least if they don't get their first choice, second, third are there. As I was mentioning earlier, sometimes students can take a ninth or 10th course. So below you have some music options and they're taken as ninth and 10th courses because they're not in the timetable. So they might uh, require some after school meetings or at lunch before school. There's also a few boxes here. If you're applying for Hockey Academy, there's some notes. Same thing for leadership. You'll need an application form attached. And then we'll have the parent and the student sign that sheet. Uh, if your child is interested in doing honors, so there will be honors assessments that will be happening next week digitally at in the evening. Um, I think the information would have probably already gone out, but if I recall, the honors applications close tomorrow. So uh, that's also accessible on our school website. You can just go to Riverside's website and there should be a big bubble that says honors assessments. So that's a bit about the academic bit uh, and the coursework at Riverside. A few other opportunities that we thought we'd talk about. So we don't, you know, obviously want to give students the most opportunities to use their French to see how much they've learned applied in authentic circumstances. So here's a few other opportunities that will come up over the course of the next few years. Uh, the DELF exam is an internationally recognized exam. Uh, it's based in Europe. We, all our students pretty much do it, but it is optional. We've only had, I think in my two French 12 classes this year, only one student opted to not do it. There's not really any harm in doing it because even if you they didn't pass, they can take it again. It just costs some money. Um, but we give them the option or we encourage them to write at a B2 level. So the Delphi exam is split into three tiers, A level, B level, C level. And then each of those levels is split into a subgroup. So A1, A2, B1, B2, et cetera. If someone is fully fluent, they would be at a C2 level. So somebody who spoke French growing up, who studied in France, they'll probably be at a C2 level that's fully fluent. For our students, we hope that they are at a B2 level. And some universities now it, where students will be working in French, for example, I have a student who's applying to a uh, university in Alberta as a bilingual nursing program, they require a B2 level. So this exam is kind of becoming the benchmark around the world in terms of where they're at in terms of their French language. So again, we'll be testing uh, their reading, their writing, their oral production and their listening skills. All those things will be coming together. Also possibility in grade 12, they can write the French 12 exam. So that's different from the uh, French immersion exam. This is for FSL. Um, so it's not quite as uh, developed. Maybe the level of the students is not quite as developed as French immersion students because they would only be doing this for one course per year. But students have the option to write that exam, which typically they find really easy. Um, and when they do their university applications, they can say they scored a 97% on French 12, um, as opposed to French Immersion 12, which might be a bit more challenging. Projet Fond is a fairly recent program that we have go going with the Francophone Theatre in Vancouver. So we have Francophone Theatre in Vancouver and they have a great program where students can basically pay five, six dollars to have a year long subscription. So that's four uh, professional productions that would normally cost 30, 35 bucks uh, per person. And we usually get a group to go for those who are interested in the arts. And then sometimes they'll even have actors or directors or the artistic director of the whole theatre come to chat with us the next day. And so that's a really authentic opportunity to expand into the Francophone community outside of the school. Carnival is an evening where we basically throw a big party with a huge cooking competition. Uh, we usually have all the grade nines compete by creating traditional French meals. And then we have uh, basically judges coming around testing everything. And while students are able to test the food, there's also karaoke going on in one room, there's improv going on in another. So it's sort of a celebration of uh, not only French immersion, but also the languages in general. Uh, and it's usually quite a fun night. Beyond Riverside. So here's a couple of programs that we find super interesting. We encourage all our students to look into them. The Explore program has been around for quite a while. You might There might be some parents here who have done the Explore program in the past, but it's funded by the federal government. And it's a program where students can go in the summer. They go to Quebec for six weeks. They'll spend their mornings studying from nine to 12. And then in the afternoons and evenings, there's typically activities and uh, opportunities to explore the city so that they can use their French again in an authentic Francophone environment. Uh, 
YMCA Summer Work Exchange, a bit similar in the sense that they'll be in Quebec for six weeks in the summertime. Uh, this is an exchange. So if your child were to go participate in this, this is typically for 16, 17 year olds. But if they were to go participate, you would be billeting also a student. Um, and YMCA arranges jobs for them to work in the summer. So they'll be gone for six weeks. They will be uh, working in French with a job that's arranged for them, making money. And then I am not even exaggerating where we've had students come back with a slightly tweaked accent because uh, it's true cultural and linguistic immersion. And it's just the most incredible way to learn a language. Finally, there's a French cohort program at SFU um, that we encourage students to look into as well. It's a bilingual program uh, that features French and political science. We've had a ton of students take part in it. Uh, and the great thing is there's so many bursaries at the university and college level for students who are doing their studies in French. The last few bits here, because I got the 10 minute warning, uh, we have a trip to France that runs in grade 10. Obviously with COVID, we haven't run it the last two years, but this is an incredible uh, trip that we are so proud of. It's completely organized by uh, Helene and myself. We keep it as cheap as possible. So we do 16 days in France, flight, hotels, all the outings, everything uh, in nine cities. So we spend a few days in Paris, we go to the South, uh, we're in the Provence area, we go to Normandy, visit uh, the war cemeteries, uh, we go see the Mont Saint-Michel. We do that all in 16 days for the low, low price of 3,200 uh, bucks. If we're able to travel in the next couple of years, we'll definitely be selling your kids on it because we think it is truly a life-changing opportunity. Uh, in grade 12, again, COVID had different ideas, but we were gonna run a trip for the first time in a long time to Quebec where over spring break, students were giving up their own time to go work uh, with the less fortunate. So working at soup kitchens, uh, we go to Cité Joie, which is a center for children with severe de developmental disabilities, uh, senior centers, we work with detox centers before. And the idea is that uh, if we're able to give a bit back of our own time and sacrifice our own spring break, that we'll learn a lot more about how important it is to help others. So those are some of the things that your kids can look forward to in the next four years. It might seem like it's not going to come up because they're only in grade eight, but Time tends to fly, and uh, before you know it, you'll be hearing about how much money you need to pay for the DELF exam. Um, some important upcoming dates. So honors application is closed tomorrow. Um, so that's available on the school website again, but I think uh, Helene might have linked that in the chat. Um, the honors assessments will happen next week over Teams, and then the following week, uh, they'll have the virtual tours. So normally we would have the students come into the school, explore all the uh, elective areas, meet the teachers very briefly, but because of COVID, uh, we're sending out a video where all the departments have created a bit of a, an info video about what they, the students can expect if they were to take those courses. Uh, and then in the first week of February, there will be virtual programming presentations. So that's when our counselors are live on a Zoom call with the students, uh, answering questions, explaining a bit more about that form that I showed you about things that they need to do if they're applying for certain programs. So that information will be reiterated to your children in the beginning of February. There's another information night, more general, not just limited to French immersion on February 2nd. And then really important cross boundary applications open at 9 a.m. on February 4th. So if your child, we have uh, some people who have filled this out on our form. If your child and you, you don't live in the catchment area, you will be required to fill out a uh, cross catchment application on the SD43 website. If you're from outside of the catchment area, but you already have a child going to Riverside, uh, from what I understand, they will be automatically accepted. But otherwise, it's a bit of a random draw with priority given to students from our district before going out of district. So that's something that you'll need to get a bit more information about online or from a counselor uh, at your school. And then on February 11th, signed and completed course selection forms are due to the grade eight teachers. So that'll give you a bit of time at home to look over the course of uh, options and then uh, decide collectively with your child what would work and what the schedule might look like for the following year. Um, just a few last questions that we, we had that I didn't get to sort of shoehorn into the presentation. Uh, we had a question about the tech requirements. Uh, so typically we want students, because we are a one-on-one -on -one tech school, we want students to come in with uh, a functioning laptop that can uh, run Office 365. 
we definitely recommend either Macs or Windows products. Typically with Google uh, computers, we find that they're not quite as reliable, but uh, you don't need to spend an arm and a leg. There's going to be, uh, there's an information package that's available for you that'll kind of outline the minimum requirements that we would need for that. But typically in our classes, kids are using their computer all day. Uh, everything's accessible online in case they're ever away. They submit their assignments online. Uh, we do a lot of projects like videos and podcasts, so definitely would need some sort of computer. Um, and the last question that I didn't get to was, do we need to apply for French immersion if we're already in French immersion? No, absolutely not. If your child is already in French immersion coming from one of our feeder schools, then they're already in the system. And that's why you'll get a form specifically for French immersion students, uh, which may be a bit different from the others. Whew, we got four minutes left. So uh, I'm just going to take a quick look to see if there's any questions. Um, if they go to Quay, cross catchment doesn't apply, right? Um, so I think it depends uh, on where they live. So if you live in the catchment area of Riverside, then it would not, uh, you wouldn't need to fill out a form. Uh, we do have a lot of students come from Quay, but if they were living, for example, in Pitt Meadows and they need to, and they drive to Quay every morning, then they would need to do a cross cash rent, from my understanding. But again, double check with your counselors um, as that's something that we don't see too, too often. We've got about three minutes if there are any questions. If you uh, do have a question and you are worried about the time running out, please take note of our email addresses. Um, you can feel free to email myself or Helene and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. As I said, this video will be made online if. I know I kind of spoke quite quickly, but if there's things that aren't clear, then that should be made accessible to you tomorrow. But if there are any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, you're free to go. You no need to stay and stick around. Um, but thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you taking the time to find out a bit more about our program, to give us an opportunity to sell the program to you. Um, and we're looking forward to meeting you and your kids in the next couple of years. Thanks very much.